Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to The Upside of Addiction and how to use your client's addictive personality to help them. So what would you think if I told you that addiction is a good thing? I know it's a strange thing to hear from a therapist, but consider this. Without addiction, we'd never have advanced as a species. We'd still be swinging from the trees, content with our static development. And we'd probably not survive very long either. Thankfully, our brains have a built-in reward system to encourage us to learn, advance, survive and thrive. We produce a natural cocaine-like chemical called dopamine that locks our attention into a highly focused state when we're keen to do or learn something. And then we do that thing or we've mastered a new skill and then we experience warm feelings of satisfaction caused by other chemicals called endorphins. So dopamine and endorphins exist to encourage us to learn and master new skills as well as do things essential for survival like having sex, eating, drinking and resting when tired and so forth. Without our internal reward system we wouldn't survive very long. But what does all this have to do with addiction? So you probably already know that when someone's addicted to a drug or cigarettes they become accustomed to a certain dose and need ever increasing amounts to feel the same effects. It's the same as with exercise, as you get fitter you need more and more stimulus to the body to feel the same level of satisfaction and tiredness. So this is true of learning as well. When people master new skills they get a dopamine and endorphin rush which is pleasurable. But when these new skills become second nature, you know, the person builds up a tolerance and needs to develop further skills to get the same buzz as before. But hence you're driven to uh, continue developing yourself. You're not just satisfied with a one guitar piece that you can play. So having a so-called addictive personality really means having great potential to learn and develop as a human being. This is why people become addicted to behaviours like smoking and why they end up needing more and more cigarettes, for example. Ironically, their natural pleasure satisfaction drive designed for survival becomes hijacked by behaviours that actually threaten their survival. But addiction doesn't happen overnight, of course. It builds over time. When someone takes their very first puff on a cigarette, the body rejects the smoke initially by coughing out the toxins. Our lungs don't have the ability to breathe in and process smoke. It's not something we're born to be able to do. To become addicted to anything, you need to repeat it and practice it, just like learning a new skill, so that eventually it feels more natural to do it than not to do it. And if you repeatedly do one thing in conjunction with another, eventually the two feel as if they naturally go together. It's only through a continued repetition that a smoker comes to feel that dr drinking coffee or an alcoholic drink must be accompanied by a cigarette or that sex must be followed by one. People who've never smoked make no such association. They can have a cup of coffee and they don't feel the need to have that with a cigarette but still enjoy the drink or a night out chatting with friends. Even hardened smokers report that they can go on a long-haul flight quite often without even feeling the need to smoke or they can go swimming um, or go to a movie theatre without even feeling the need to smoke because the association hasn't been built up between that experience and smoking. This associative factor called pattern matching is more important in addiction than so-called physical addiction. When we seek to cure someone of smoking we need to look at those factors and use our knowledge of how the brain keeps the addiction in place to help free the person. Many members of the public, even if they know nothing else about therapeutic hypnosis, recognize that hypnosis is often used to help people stop smoking. And it's almost a cliche, but for a good reason. Hypnosis can help unlock past conditioning very quickly. 
whether that's a conditioned phobic response to a spider or a conditioned addictive need for a cigarette. And hypnosis can help build up the part of the smoker that wants to quit and lead a healthier life and escape the smoking trap. I regularly see lifelong chronic smokers cured of smoking in one hour. Any emotional attachment the smoker has to the behavior can become detached and they don't even have to turn into rabid anti-smokers either. Hatred and love both require too much emotional involvement to be considered opposites. Indifference is what we're after for, for successful smoking cessation. When you can help a smoker to the point where cigarettes just don't matter to them anymore, you'll have helped them already begin to heal from the damaging effects of that old destructive behavior. So I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear where my next video is published, hit the notification bell below this video. I'm Mark Terrell of Uncommon Knowledge. And if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com. That's unk.com slash blog. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.